solemnity of Christ the King evolved through decades. As I said to you, in 1925, Pope Pius XI, through his encyclical Quas Primas, introduced this feast celebration of the solemnity in the Catholic Church. Then it was taken up by Pope Paul VI in 1969 through his apostolic letter, Motu Proprio Misteri Pasqualis, he proclaimed Jesus Christ as the King of the Universe. To be precise in Latin, Domini Nostri Jesu Christi Universorum Regis. That is Jesus Christ our Lord, Universal King. Dear friends, when we look at this feast, when we look at Christ, we understand clearly what kind of kingdom he was proclaiming and what kind of king was he. Now let us understand it very clearly here. What was the motivation, what was the preaching of Jesus that gave us an understanding of his kingship? The first thing that we come to know, Jesus himself said, that I have come to serve and not to be served. So the first ingredient of this kingdom is service to humanity. And that's why he epitomized his ministry at the end of his life by washing the feet of his disciples. You know, at the Last Supper, he bent on knees washing the feet of his disciples. And that is the characteristics of his kingship. The king who is a servant, who came to serve and not to be served. The second characteristic nature of this kingdom is shepherding or defending. You know, Jesus is the shepherd. He called himself to be the good shepherd. Now, as we have noted in the first reading taken from Ezekiel chapter 34 verses 11 to 17, God himself declaring that he will be the shepherd of the sheep. And what he will do? He will seek and search the lost sheep and bring them back to the flock. And what he will do then? He will nurse the injured and feed the weak. And that is why that same imagery was taken by Christ himself shepherding. And how did he shepherd? You know, he was there all the time with all kinds of people. Shepherding is leading. Shepherding is guiding. Shepherding is going ahead. Shepherding is defending. That is what he did. He was surrounded by all kinds of people. We know that they were dis defenseless people. When the chief priests and the scribes were attacking Jesus, attacking his disciples, and attacking the tax collectors and Samaritans, Jesus was there all the time, guiding them, leading them, inspiring them. And that is the task of a good shepherd, leading the sheep to a safer place and taking care of the sheep. The third ingredient of this kingdom is sacrifice. You know, Jesus sacrificed himself. And where, where was the biggest sacrifice? That was on Mount Calvary. He extended his hands and feet and died on the cross. Now today when we look at a king, today there are leaders, you know, they are sort of kings, the kind of kings. And when there is a battle going on, what do they do? They sit in a very safe room and send the soldiers to the battlefield to fight. The soldiers will die, the king won't die. But in the past, a king had to go with the, with the soldiers to the battlefield to fight with a sword in hand, with a spear in hand. And that is the nature of Jesus' kingdom. He went to the battlefield. He was with the disciples, with all kinds of people. And he sacrificed himself on the cross. And that is another nature of this great king. The fourth one we need, see, Jesus sends his disciples. You know, a king must expand his kingdom. He must rule, but he must also expand. And what was the expansion of Jesus' kingdom? Was sending his disciples to baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit after the resurrection. 
go and proclaim the kingdom and tell to the people the kingdom of god is at hand and that is the sort of kingdom and the king and now saint paul tells us that we being the soldiers of christ you know after we have received baptism and confirmation and all the sacraments we have become the soldiers of christ and according to him we all must put on the armor of god to become the soldiers of his kingship or kingdom and what is the armor of god if you refer to ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 to 17 you will find there very clearly manifested or shown what is a kind of armor of god st paul explains gird yourself belt yourself with the belt of truth put on the breastplate of righteousness wear the helmet of salvation hold the shield of faith and have the sword of the spirit that is the armor of god and be prepared your shoes on to proclaim the gospel of peace so that is what our king asks us now when we look at uh, the gospel of matthew as we have reflected throughout the year you know we are at the end of this liturgical year we reflected on all sundays the gospel of matthew if you refer matthew chapter 13 you will find various parables giving out the nature of god's kingdom so jesus explains the nature of god's kingdom to ordinary people he took out this beautiful parables like uh, stories anecdotes the first one he used was the kingdom of god is like a hidden treasure in a field a man finds that hidden treasure goes and buys that field for himself so the first characteristics of this kingdom is hiddenness and then another merchant goes out seeking precious pearls he finds a very precious pearl big one and he sells everything he has and buys that pearl so here we find the preciousness of god's kingdom the third parable he uses is the the parable of the mustard seed the smallest seed that is sown in the field becomes the biggest of the shrubs and then on the branches of this tree the birds of the air will come and nest so that is another nature of expansion of god's kingdom the fourth parable was the fish net the fisherman goes and casts the net into the sea and he drags the entire net to the shore takes out the good fish and puts in the basket and the bad items and bad fish he throws back into the sea so another parable that helps us to grasp the nature of god's kingdom the last parable jesus used was the parable of the yeast the woman goes and puts this yeast in three measures of dough and what happens the whole dough ferments and expands it becomes spongy and porous and tasty and that is god's kingdom so therefore with all these beautiful parables jesus was capable of explaining the nature of god's kingdom the nature of his own kingship and kingdom now looking at this gospel passage today jesus says the son of man will come with all his angels in glory and he will sit on the throne of glory and all the nations will be gathered around him and he will begin to judge and what is the judgment dear friends let us look at christianity let it, let us look at ourselves what kind of mentality and spirituality we try to have in our daily life now when we go for confession let us take a very concrete example what are our confessions normally our confessions normally are i did not go for sunday mass i did not uh, you know fast i ate meat on friday i ate meat during lenten season i had bad thoughts i had you know bad actions i saw something dirty in the television i saw something dirty in the internet 
Now on the last day, God is not going to ask all that. You know, we are so particular about our personal sanctification. In our spirituality, very often we become so selfish. We say, oh, I need to save myself. What about others? I don't care. You know, when we pray, Lord, please make me sit on your right side. What about others? I don't care if they go to hell. What about others? I don't care at all. You know, my spirituality has become so egocentric, selfish, that I would like to save myself. And today's gospel passage, Jesus is giving us something that is extraordinary. God is not going to ask how pure you were, how right you were, how just you were, how, how holy you were. God is going to ask this simple question. When I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was thirsty, did you give me a drink? When I was a prisoner, did you visit me? When I was a stranger, did you welcome me? When I was naked, did you clothe me? Dear friends, these are the fundamental questions of God's kingdom. We will be judged according to our deeds, not on my personal sanctification. Of course, those things are needed. You know, without being personally holy, I won't be able to do anything good to the others. But then, if I concentrate all the time about saving myself, God will be simply asking me a question. What have you done to save others? What have you done to save others? You know, that is the question. That will shake us on the last day. And that's why today's gospel passage, enter into my kingdom, because you actually helped me when I was in prison. When I naked and I was naked, you clothed me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. When we look at this gospel passage, dear friends, I think we need to change the whole, whole spiritual understanding we have. Ultimately, it is love of God and love of neighbor. That's why the, these two greatest commandments, love your neighbor as yourself, love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Now sometimes, people come to me with a problem, you know, normal problem that happens in this modern society. You know, it could be a problem with uh, purity, it could be a problem with watching something that is not to be watched. You know, precisely the wording is watching pornography. Now, young people come and confess, Father, I am not able to come out of it. I am not able to come out of it. You know, I give them a very concrete, concrete situation to come out. I just ask them, how many people do you meet? How many people you visit? How many people you try to help in your daily life? I don't have time for that. Where do you have time? You know, dear friends, most of our addictions, most of our imperfections can be solved when we become very sociable. You know, sociable in the sense, I need to get out of myself to help someone who is in need. Then, I don't have time for all those bad things. I have time for others. I have time to visit someone who is suffering. I have time to someone who is really thirsty and hungry. What kind of hunger and thirst we have in Canada? May not be for food. Of course, there are also homeless who do not have enough food. But then there will be other hunger. People hungry for love. People hungry for a consoling word. People hungry for companionship, friendship, appreciation, a good gesture, a good word. At the last moment, we will be asked that. Not how holy you were, how pure you were. Of course, all those things are needed. But then, our concern and love for those people who are lost, least, less fortunate. There was a king who became very old and he did not have sons and daughters to be appointed as king or queen of his kingdom. And therefore, he sent a message to his kingdom saying that all those young people, please come to my palace. I would like to interview you. And if you are 
capable, then I will give you my powers to be the king or queen. So all these young men and women went to the king's palace and there was a young man who was working in the field and his mom told him, you know we have been all the time poor, it could be that you will be chosen a king and therefore please go to the king's palace and he resisted saying that I am not meant for becoming a king. But then somehow his mom coerced him, forced him and she gave him a robe, a little bit for food and water for his journey. And reluctantly this young man went to see the king. And there so many people were going. As this young man was approaching the palace, the gate of the palace, he saw a lot of misery outside. And he saw a very old man shivering in cold. He looked very pale. And he really was so sorry for that old man. He said, Anyway, I am not here for becoming a king. Who am I? I am, I have come here by force of my mom. And therefore he removes his outer robe and gives to that old man. And gives his food, shares his water. And then he wanted to see the king. That was an opportunity for him because always invite, always invited to the palace. He enters the palace. And after a while, when all these young people Young men and women gathered in the palace, in the big hall. Two soldiers came around him. And he was shivering with fear. And he said, I have not done anything. Why are you here? And the soldier said, the king wants you right now. And he was totally upset and sad. And he was accompanied by these two soldiers into the presence of the king. And he was so shy and fear filled. He did not raise his head, but the king said, My son, look at me. And he reluctantly looked at the king. And who was that guy? He was the old man who was outside the gate, shivering and weak. And there he had noticed this young man's generosity. He had given his robe, his food and water. And the king said, I wanted someone who knows to love the neighbor. And that is why you are the right person. You are appointed the king of this kingdom. Therefore, dear friends, this is a lesson to all of us. On the last day, God will be asking a fundamental question. Have you done anything to my brothers and sisters who are least? Whatever you have done to the least of my brothers and sisters, you have done unto me. And therefore, enter into the joy of the kingdom. Kindly rise, Professor.